Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Big news about SpaceX Starship from Elon Musk. Are you ready? Let's go. The first thing is Elon showed off this video of Raptor engines moving on the Starship. Let me play that again. You can see this is how they, it's called gimbling or vectoring. This is how they're going to steer Starship. These are at the center of the center engines in the booster and they help angle how it's going to move. Elon talked about this. Each Raptor engine, there's uh, 29 Raptor engines in this version, going to be 33 Raptor engines in the future. These are Raptor 1 engines and they produce 185 metric tons of force. Raptor 2 has now started production. This is big news because Elon was talking a few weeks ago about some big crisis in Raptor 2 and they weren't able to achieve what they were trying to achieve it was the big big crisis over Thanksgiving and people had to you know take you know end their vacations and come back and get get shit done. Raptor 2 is going to have 230 plus tons, so a much more powerful engine. And there's going to be 33 of them on the booster. Next booster will have 33 Raptor 2 engines with 13 steering. The video that I showed you before, there were nine Raptor engines steering. So it's going to have more Raptors. Each Raptor is going to be more powerful and more of them will be available for steering. There was another tweet, which I didn't keep where the gimbling is up to 15 degrees, which just indicates how much steering they can do. Not a big deal. And this is the other big piece of news that I think is really huge. Starship is being upgraded to nine engines. Current Starships that we've seen have had six engines, three for sea level. Sea level is operating at ground level. There were three vacuum engines on the current version of Starship that's gonna, about to be launched in the orbital test launch. But the new version of Starship will have six vacuum engines. That's a lot more power, a lot more thrust with Raptor 2 engines, so more power still. So really, really big and increased propellant load. And he said this, John Krause asked about any other changes and Elon said the ship is just begging for three more vacuum engines to be added, which is that's going from six engines to nine engines. The tanks will stretch for more propellant load. Stretching the tanks. I talked about that in this video here and I made a t-shirt about it. These are different versions of Starship. If you stretch the tanks and you make other changes, this is the Starship t-shirt. You can buy this at elonbits.com. It's one of my favorite shirts. I don't know exactly what Elon means with stretching the tanks, but you can see on the shirt that if you shrink the payload on the, if you shrink the payload, you make the payload area smaller, you can make the tanks bigger. If, if, you, if you shrink the payload, if, the, if you go to the top of the rocket, and you shrink the payload, then you have more room to stretch the tanks and you have more fuel. This relates to what's called the tyranny of the rocket equation. There's this huge challenge with rocketry. You can only accelerate so much. The, the faster you can accelerate, the more total acceleration you can accommodate, the further out into space you can go, the, for the larger payloads you can deliver. If you shrink the payload, you can increase delta V and you can get further out. You can go faster, you can achieve greater things. So very, very interesting what Elon's planning on doing. We're going to learn more about this hopefully soon. I am massively excited about this. So what's coming? What's coming is we're going to have an orbital launch soon, probably January, February. Maybe it'll be pushed to March. Booster number four, Starship number 20, 420, of course. I'm sure that's completely an accident. As you can tell, I'm excited. I'm wearing the Critical Enthusiasm shirt. Critical analysis combined with enthusiasm. I think this is great stuff. Really looking forward to this happening. Hoping I can get out there to the southern tip of Texas to watch the Starship orbital launch. This is going to be gangbusters crazy stuff. And another big thing at the bottom, there was this question about Starship launching from the Cape. Cape Canaveral, which I live in Florida. Canaveral is only about a two and a half hour drive for me. I've watched launches from there before. I believe, I have said this, I think Canaveral is actually going to do more Starship launches than the southern tip of Texas. Canaveral is better positioned to be the long-term launch site for a you know, major launch facility for SpaceX. It'll probably be both, but I just think fundamentally Canaveral is a better location. It's closer to large cities. It has a lot of existing infrastructure. Southern tip of Texas is great for some reasons, but there's not a lot of infrastructure. There's not any big cities around. There's not any major universities around to provide the support that you need to keep it going. Texas is great. Florida is great. Both great states, both great governments that are supportive of what SpaceX is doing. But I think fundamentally Canaveral is just a better location for a variety of reasons. What I don't know is whether the Air Force will allow SpaceX to do as many launches as they want to do. 
But the same potential issue could have happened in Brownsville, Texas at the southern tip that they may just get tired of having so many launches. So that's a challenge. In a sense, Canaveral is better because it is further from populations and the population, it's known as the Space Coast, they're used to launches. So more likely to have public support for launches there, more infrastructure, you're close to Orlando, Disney World, Universal Studios. If you're an engineer, where do you want your family to live? Do you want your family to live in the southern tip of Texas that's not near anything exciting? Or do you want your family to live near Disney World, Universal Studios, Orlando, and all the other great stuff in Orlando, and Tampa, and West Palm Beach, and Jupiter, and Jacksonville, and Daytona Beach? There's so much great stuff around the Space Coast, not to mention Melbourne and the Space Coast itself. Great stuff all around. Please check out my other videos. Please support the channel on Patreon. Thank you to the Vasa Law Firm in Sweden, all my other Patreon supporters for helping the channel grow. Please check out The Daily Lie, and thanks to my supporters, The Daily Lie. Link to that in the description below. Check out the t-shirts, elonbits.com, and thank you so much for watching.